An LVAD is a mechanical heart pump. Having it requires a big operation and open heart surgery. Current modern day LVADs are small enough to fit into the palm of your hand and weigh about 500 grams. One end of the LVAD pump is attached to the left ventricle of the heart, whilst the other end of the LVAD is connected to the aorta, the main artery of the heart. The LVAD works by sucking blood from the left ventricle and then pumping it into the aorta and rest of the body. The LVAD assists the heart whilst the heart continues to beat. The two work together to provide a good enough circulation for the patient to be able to live longer and live a better quality of life out of hospital. To keep the LVAD working continuously, the LVAD is connected to a cable within the body at one end and to a controller and a power source outside the body at the other end. A power source can either be a mains connection, a battery, or a connection in your car. The cable, called a driveline, comes out of the body at the site of the abdomen. The controller monitors the function of the LVAD and the battery power and will alarm to tell the patient if there is a problem with the LVAD which needs to be fixed. An additional battery is always connected to the controller, so if one battery runs down, there is another to power the LVAD for several more hours. Modern LVADs are very reliable and can support patients for years. Most patients who are considered for an LVAD have a very limited quality of life before the operation. They feel tired, weak and are very breathless. Some have difficulty getting washed and dressed and might not be able to leave the house. Others may be stuck in hospital and dependent on very strong continuous intravenous medication to maintain the body's circulation. As soon as the LVAD is implanted, the blood supply to the body returns to normal, so heart failure symptoms improve. Patients who have been too unwell to walk around are quickly able to get up and about. Patients who had been stuck in hospital, dependent on continuous intravenous medication, are able to get home. Many patients can soon return to other normal activities, like driving and going on holiday. Some of them even return to work. There's two really good reasons why you may be offered an LVAD instead of a heart transplant. The first reason is the presence of very high blood pressure within your lung. It's often called pulmonary hypertension by the medical team. Um, if you had a heart transplant and you had pulmonary hypertension, the chances of surviving heart transplantation are vastly reduced. Hence the reason we need to put the LVAD in first to bring the pulmonary pressures down and then get you transplanted after that. The other reason is because you're so ill that we don't have enough time to wait for a donor to become available and we think it's more prudent to go ahead and have an LVAD to save your life to get back to normal than keep waiting on the donor waiting list for a heart to become available and risk potentially dying whilst waiting. The NHS only allows us to put LVADs in as a bridge to transplant which basically means the LVAD goes in first and then Eventually, we'll get you back on the transplant list with the LVAD in and uh, with the hope of getting you a heart transplant. Sometimes, however, uh, although our intentions is to get you a heart transplant, patients develop complications with their LVAD, which means they can no longer have a heart transplant. We call that destination therapy, or you live out your life with the LVAD. LVAD survival is not as good as heart transplant survival because of the risk of developing LVAD-related complications, such as bleeding surgical bleeding during the early phase, and gastrointestinal bleeding after three months. Infection is the most common adverse event that occurs in the early and late phase after an LVAD. Stroke. Stroke risk persists after LVAD implantation. Some patients may continue to have recurrent heart failure symptoms despite having the LVAD. Symptoms include breathlessness, fluid retention, leg and abdominal swelling, and fatigue. It is important to understand patients who are recommended for an LVAD are expected to have a life expectancy of less than one to two years without an LVAD. Life expectancy with an LVAD on average is four years. Uh, it's important to note that when you're offered an LVAD it's thought that you will live longer with the LVAD and hopefully live a better quality of life with an LVAD than without. When you ask patients who've had an LVAD how they feel and whether they made the right decision, 80% of patients after two years with the LVAD say that they made the right decision and are leading a better quality of life than before the LVAD. It's also important to recognise that quality of life is affected in a different way. So before you have an LVAD, you're likely to be breathless, tired, doing very 
a little exertion. After the elevator, you're likely to be able to do things that you weren't able to before, for example, climb stairs and walk up inclines. However, because of the LVAD being a mechanical pump, a series of complications can occur, such as bleeding, infection, clotting within the LVAD. Bleeding can come in two places, from the bowel or potentially in the brain. The frequency of these kind of complications means that a lot of patients develop these problems over time, and about 90% of patients will have developed one of these complications after three years uh, of having or living with the LVAD.